Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, as I've been listening to other uh, speakers, I've reflected on um, a little bit on my career and experiences. I started out as a prosecutor a long time ago um, dealing with white collar crime. And then this thing called the internet came along and it, and it really disrupted my life as a prosecutor uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one, because the crime started to be across border. Uh, and that challenged all of the traditional legal tools that I had a, 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 to use. And number two, there were these companies involved that knew a lot more about the technology and, and, and what was going on than I did or any of the law enforcement I worked with. And now 15 years later, we're still grappling with those two issues. Um, almost every crime that I see on the internet is cross-border. And almost every crime that I see on the internet involves multiple companies that have a deeper level of technical understanding than the law enforcement doing the investigation. Uh, which means that we, we together uh, have some work to do. And, and I think that's why we're here today and, and why we're talking about um, the role of the private sector in making the internet secure for the future. Um, at, a, at a really pragmatic level, uh, sitting inside Facebook, I can tell you I, I need the government's help in helping to make Facebook a secure environment. And that there are some specific things that I would love to see uh, going forward. Uh, number one is I would love for governments around the world to invest more in education. Uh, very specifically, there are not enough graduates coming out of higher education with the skills to be the cyber warriors uh, that, that can be inside our companies, that can be inside our governments, uh, defending against attacks. Uh, I would hire a half a dozen security engineers today if I could find them. And I know a hundred other companies that would say the same thing. We don't have enough people getting the education, and, and, that's, and that's a failure. We've got to do better at that. We've got to train people for careers in this environment. Um, education of consumers. Uh, we, we, I'm not talking about that sophisticated level of uh, understanding that you need to be able to track down and, and uh, break down a malware binary. I'm talking about training consumers on how to recognize phishing attacks, training consumers on how to know when uh, the difference is between HTTP and HTTPS, and, and a long list of other basics that we need all consumers to understand. Um, I see on the corporate side, I'll focus on preparing educational information for people using my service. And Microsoft will focus on preparing educational information for people using their service. And Google will do the same, and so on. But where we need governments to come in is, is to identify what is the training that works across the different aspects of the internet environment and how do we harmonize that education. Uh, there's a really important role that government could play there. Uh, the government could play a really important role in training law enforcement and judges. Uh, when we do prosecutions, we don't see enough um, uh, law enforcement with deep understanding of, of how to do these investigations. Uh, we see uh, judges the first time they get a case where the prosecutor trying to explain how uh, something went from IP to IP and it needs to be explained. Uh, so that, these are just a couple of examples of foundational things that we, we can and should do more together. Um, we should focus on these big pictures of, of cross-border jurisdiction and how to do these investigations, but we also need to take care of the, um, the little aspects that all will add up to success in, in these prosecutions and investigations. Um, we're trying to be innovative in these areas at Facebook. Uh, we're trying to educate people. Uh, we're trying to build a community of, of security researchers all over the world who are, uh, understand the internet. I actually um, consider my security team at Facebook to include 60 people in India. And you could say, oh, well, how, how does that make sense? Uh, well, a couple of years ago, we launched a program that we call the Bug Bounty Program, which is we, we told the world, if you can find a vulnerability on our site, we'll pay you money. Uh, so test our site, try and poke holes in it. And we set up this process where people could um, create uh, test accounts. Uh, in, the, in less than two years, we've gotten re successful reports from 60 different people in India 
And as a result, from my team, I've paid out in increments of no less than $500 at a time over $120,000 to people in India for a vulnerability at a time. I've also hired two people onto my team from uh, uh, the mass of people who've been reporting vulnerabilities to us. To me, that White Hat program is an example of a way that we can democratize security, that we can empower people to try and do investigations on the internet. Um, I view each of those people now as something to put on their resume to show that they understand something about internet security, that they've actually done it practically, they've earned money doing it. I know there are quite a few people around the world now who are participating in these bug bounty programs and actually making a living. And you can do it from anywhere. Uh, and that's the exciting thing about that. But we've got to work together to find these opportunities to get people education uh, and, and give them the opportunities because the, that's what the internet offers for us, the opportunity for anyone anywhere to have an impact. Um, so I'm excited to be here uh, with you talking about um, security. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on how we do security inside Facebook you know, from the ground up, but I'd be happy to take questions on that. So thank you for the time. Thank you.